Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. If you guys don't already know, hi, my name is Christina. I do have a second channel, which is Casually Christina. We do things more casually over there. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon is for 18 and up. Over there, we do more personal story times. We go live over there. And I have a $2 tier over there where all the true crime stuff that can't go onto YouTube, it goes over there. As a matter of fact, last week, I just uploaded a super highly requested video. It's over there if you guys are wanting to see it. And you can read the titles if you just go over there, check and see if it's something you wanna see. And I also have an Instagram, a Facebook, and a Snapchat. And all of those are linked down in the description box if you'd like to come and check me out. So in today's video, y'all, we're gonna be talking about a mother, all right. Now, I wanna say before we get into this, okay, this video is going to be all based on public information that's out there, filtered through my own personal opinion. Go do your own research, please form your own opinion. Everything is alleged. This all just came out. And so I don't know, I don't know these people, but my goodness gracious, let's get into this. So today's video is going to be about the highly requested case of Corey and Eric Richens. Did y'all hear about this? Corey Richens is the one that wrote this children's book and went on tour on television and was doing all this press about this children's book about grief and people were really applauding her and buying this book and looking up to her and it was giving her kids possibly some sort of strength. And then it came out that a whole bunch of stuff went on behind the scenes. Let me just start at the beginning. 39 year old Eric Eugene Richens was born on May 13th of 1982 in Bountiful, Utah. As a child, Eric spent a lot of his time with his dad learning how to manage their ranch and take care of the horses and cows. He would spend his time mending fences and hauling hay and he was actually the oldest of three children and he had two younger sisters who he loved and protected and all growing up, they loved their big brother. Eric was naturally athletic. He played basketball, baseball, and soccer and was also known to be a master hunter. Everyone who knew him said he was the sweetest guy. He would grow up to earn a bachelor's degree from the University of Utah and then he served a two-year church mission in Mexico City where he learned to speak Spanish fluently. So Eric was just known to love hunting, his family, cattle ranching, and being an entrepreneur. Since Eric was the oldest child born into his family's ranching legacy, he had a lot of responsibility on his shoulders from day one, being the only boy, having the two younger sisters as siblings. He grew up working hard, showing up, and being somebody that you could depend on. Eric got married for the first time in 2005 to a woman named Julie Jorgensen. Now, for whatever reason, that marriage ended up not working out, and in 2009, Eric and Julie got a divorce. There's not a lot out there about the divorce, but stuff ended up happening between Eric and Julie during this divorce that made him wanna do things differently for himself in the future. Julie, unfortunately, his ex-wife did pass away in a car accident in 2011, but Eric was still hopeful to find love. And he thought that he found it all when he met a young woman who was 33 years old named Corey. Corey and Eric had a whirlwind of love. It seemed like they fell in love quickly and she was just swept off of her feet by Eric and he was head over heels in love with her as well. Before you know it, he proposed to her and planned on marrying her and starting a new family, and this would be his forever family. And on June 15th of 2013, Corey and Eric tied the knot. Everything seemed great, but the word on the street is allegedly 
that at the wedding, Eric's family was there and they presented Corey with a prenup. The reason why it is alleged that it was on the same day is because the dates of their wedding slash marriage and the date of the signing of the prenup was on the exact same day. June 15th of 2019. And I don't currently know the history of Eric's family's finances, but it can be assumed that they weren't struggling, okay? They, they, they had a little bit of something to the point that they had already spoke with Eric. Like you can imagine he's got two younger sisters at this point, they're all adults. They wanna, they wanna protect their big brother. He's got a big heart. He's always protected them. He would give the shirt off of his back. They love their big brother and they don't wanna see him get drugged through the mud by another woman, right? So they had already had this conversation, you need to get a prenup. So she ends up signing the prenup. Now, the way that the prenup was worded was that whatever the two of them, Corey and Eric, gained before the marriage and during the marriage, if they were to divorce, they both take what they earned. Okay, you know how some prenups are like, you can't take anything that I earned before the marriage, but anything after the marriage can be split. No, this was very specific. And it was said to be specific like that because Eric owned his own business. He was in partnership and he was doing really well with this business. And his family, in my opinion, did the right thing, especially after the first marriage in order to protect him. Nevertheless, they get married, they're living together, and they go on to have three little boys. And Eric is just as happy as can be. He's got his three boys, he's got them out traveling with them, taking them on family vacations, taking them to work with them, taking them to the cattle ranch, hanging out with his parents and all the family. And this is what he had always wanted. However, trouble in paradise did start. And even though you could see all these like smiling pictures of them online, there was some weird stuff going on behind the scenes. It was said that they had taken a family vacation in 2020 with Corey and Eric and their three kids and other family members had went too and they all went to Greece. One night, allegedly, Corey made her husband Eric a drink. He drank the drink and he got deathly sick deathly sick. He was so sick that he told his sister that he thought Corey might be trying to poison him. Now, I don't know if he said it in a joking way, like, oh my gosh, he's trying to poison me, or if he said it in a serious way, but nevertheless, that's what he told his sister. Other things had been going on between the couple, like in 2022, allegedly, the couple was arguing over this like old abandoned ranch. Corey wanted to buy the ranch and redo it and all that stuff. It was like a couple million dollars and Eric didn't want anything to do with it, so they were butting heads about it. Things look great online, but behind the scenes, they were having some disagreements. Sadly though, all of these disagreements and these little bickers and Eric telling his sister this and da 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 da, it all came to a screeching halt on March 4th of 2022. Eric was found deceased at the foot of his bed. Paramedics came and life-saving measures were attempted but were unsuccessful according to the police to revive Eric. Corey said that on March 3rd at 11 p.m. they were celebrating her closing on a house for her business. She said she made him a drink called a Moscow Mule in the kitchen and brought it to their bedroom where he drank it in the bed. Corey said that not long after she took the drink to her husband where he was just relaxing and having this drink in the bed. She went to go put the kids to bed. Allegedly, one of her children had night terrors, so she laid down in the bed with her son until he could fall asleep, and then she was gonna get up and go get in their bed, but she allegedly fell asleep as well. That's when she would later wake up and go into the room and find her husband unresponsive. Corey said she immediately called 911 and this was at around 3 a.m. Once Eric's family found out that Eric had passed, they immediately went to the investigators and said, you need to investigate her. They knew, you know what I mean? They knew that something wasn't right with the first wife, they're trying to protect with the second, da, 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 da. And next thing you know, they get a phone call that he's, he's gone. The family even went as far as telling the investigators that Eric had told them that if anything ever happened to him, it was Corey. During the investigation of Eric's death, when questioned, Corey said that she had left her cell phone plugged in her bedroom while she was laying down with her child. However, when the police looked into the cell phone data, it showed that her phone was locked and unlocked multiple times and that there was movement on the phone. There was also several messages sent and received during the same time window, but those messages were conveniently deleted. So an autopsy was done. 
When the autopsy results come back, it come back that Eric had passed away from an OD of fentanyl five times the lethal dose. If you guys have ever seen those photos of fentanyl and how much it takes to end a person, it ain't much. It's like a, a dust of something. So even five times is just a a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. After the autopsy came back about this lethal OD, this is when the investigators obtained a search warrant and they went into the house and they took all the electronics and they searched everything. This was a full-fledged investigation at this point. Investigators would discover that Corey had actually contacted a friend several times asking if she could get a prescription for pain medication for an investor who had a back injury. Corey ended up getting some just like pain medication from this person and a house that she was flipping. So the person brought the pain medication, Corey brought the cash, she put it down, took the medicine, they swapped it out and she got pain meds from this person. But then on February 11th, Corey ended up getting 15 to 20 fentanyl pills from this friend where she ended up paying $900. This is so crazy to me. You see all this stuff online where, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, somebody, you know, got something with a little bit in it and it's happening all the time now. And then you've got this woman who's going out actually purchasing this stuff in large quantities. On February 14th, Eric and Corey had a Valentine's Day dinner at their home. And shortly after the dinner, again, Eric allegedly became very, very ill. He even broke out into hives and he had to use his son's EpiPen. He took Benadryl and fell asleep for a few hours before he felt better. And he told a friend that he thought his wife was trying to poison him. And then just six days later, Eric was found deceased after a long day and having one drink in a THC gummy. Now, the day after Eric's death, Corey ended up closing on a large $2 million home, so she threw a big old party to celebrate on the closing of this home. Now, you guys, her husband passed away, okay? The next day, she's gonna throw a big, huge party because she closed on a home. Seems suspicious. This was the home that Corey and Eric had been arguing about that she wanted to buy and he told her no, he didn't want her to buy it. So she closed on it literally the day after he passed away. It is also said that one of Corey's sisters ended up showing up and confronting her about the situation with Eric, her brother, and allegedly Corey assaulted Eric's sister. Investigators also found out that Eric had held a joint life insurance policy with his business partner that Corey had unsuccessfully tried to change in January of 2022. Corey had allegedly attempted to make herself the sole beneficiary of the policy, but the insurance company notified the men of the change and they were able to fix it. Eric then removed Corey from his will and replaced her with his sister. He did not inform Corey of the change because according to his sisters, he believed believe that she may kill him for the money, which he wanted to go to his children. Now, mind y'all, this is all happening just last year, 2022. Well, later, Corey ends up writing this book. Are you with me? She goes on a full press tour and everything, talking about this book that she wrote with her children and for her children to help them get through the grief of losing their father. So my husband passed away unexpectedly last year. So it's March 4th was a one year anniversary for us. And um, he was 39. It completely took us all by shock. Um, and we have three little boys, 10, nine and six. And, um, you know, we kind of my kids and I kind of wrote this book on the different emotions and grieving processes that we've experienced last year and you know hoping that it can kind of help other kids you know um deal with this and kind of you know find happiness some some way or another and to make sense and process i'm yes. sure and i'm yeah. sure you felt that going mm -hmm. through and trying to explain it and articulate it for you and your boys yes Exactly. And a month after her TV interview on May 8th of this year of 2023, Corey was officially arrested and charged with first degree murder and three counts of second degree possession of a controlled substance with intent to distribute. So this all just went down this month of May of 2023 with her being arrested. And you got to think about like his family. First of all, I feel so much for his family because have you ever had that family member or that friend or 
yourself, you've been that one, but let's say the family member or the friend, but and you see what the other person is doing, or you're trying to protect this person in your life, or you want to, when they're adults, you can only do what you can do, right? But you're trying to protect because you know they're a good person to their core, they're hardworking or da, 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 whatever. And you're watching the train wreck happen and you can't stop it. I wish so bad that Eric would have left. I mean, I cannot tell every person what's right for them in their marriage or their relationships, but I do feel strongly enough to say that if you are literally telling your family members and your friends that you think this person might kill you, you should get out. If you feel the need to tell somebody, or if you even think that somebody that you are close to, your spouse, whoever, is going to hurt you, please get away. There are so many situations like this. I cannot even make, an, I can't, I could make a video every single day and still not cover all of these cases that are like this in these DV situations. This is so sad. So sad for, for Eric, for his family, and now his three boys. His three innocent, precious boys. The family that Eric always wanted. Now, their mama, who wrote a book with them, is in jail. Now, she ain't been found guilty yet. She just got arrested. So she's still got to have her day in court and it's innocent until proven guilty. But wow, in the last year, those three little boys have lost their father and right now, their mother. And what if Eric's family didn't press it? What if they didn't go to the investigators and say, hey, you know, he said this, that, 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 that. What if he was just a guy that didn't really have any family? Think about how many people can get away with that type of thing. That's scary. Now, since then, Corey's book, The Are You With Me, has allegedly been removed from Amazon and her Facebook posts and stuff like this. All of this stuff has been removed and they're just waiting to see what happens in court. Have y'all heard about this? Is it not sad? I feel so heartbroken for this guy and for his family and for his kids. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Other than that, thank you all so much for being here. I love you guys. I am going to be watching this to find out what happens with this woman, Corey. I sure hope his family is okay. At least they probably feel better that they feel like there's some justice starting to be served. So hopefully... They have a little bit of hope now, but let me know what you guys think down below. Other than that, I love y'all and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.